we'll kick it off on slide four, um, looking at uh, just the overview. Finally, we have a guide, we have a adjusted guidance below uh, $4 for, for Wabtec. Uh, we uh, have seen pretty good decrementals through 2016 as the freight volumes have fallen. And we'll look at a little bit of why that is in terms of steel and incentive comp accruals. Um, what we're seeing also is just backlogs fade. I think the most important thing from this section to take away is that deliveries of things like rail cars and locomotives are still above replacement demand. You still had over 15,000 rail cars delivered in the third quarter, probably have an equivalent pace to that now. That's still very elevated by historical standard. We're still working off uh, what had been a record backlog. Orders are coming in you know, at less than a third of, uh, of deliveries. And that tells you a lot about where revenues and margins are going, trade orders, not sales. Um, secondly, we'll take a, a long look at the, uh, at the Favely deal. It was expensive, it was more expensive than expected with the divestitures and deal term uh, revision that we saw. Uh, we also don't know exactly what the uh, dilution from the transaction will be. We do know that there's probably a tax incentive uh, for the minority shareholders to opt for shares, which makes it somewhat more expensive from an existing Wabtec uh, perspective. We'll look a bit at the investment cycle in Europe. Basically, we had uh, a period of liberalization in that market, uh, the ability uh, to separate uh, track from the rolling stock and services uh, that are provided on it that resulted in a, in a minor, by this, uh, by this industry perhaps major, but a, a minor uh, investment boom, uh, expansion in spending in that market. Uh, and when we look at the U.S. transit market, we'll see a pretty tight correlation to oil prices and, and ridership. Um, and while those things are interesting and sort of do portend a bit of a slowing or, or slow decline, uh, in the market, uh, along with some books to bill, book to bill ratios that also don't look necessarily as positive, uh, what we see is, uh, is a couple of very serious threats, most notably Chinese competitive entry uh, as specified in the five-year plan into the uh, passenger, you know, the transit rail equipment market. Those growth goals are very, very aggressive. And when those growth goals have been put out in the past in industries like shipbuilding, they have been transformative to say the least and not in a favorable way for existing competitors. Um, we're seeing the cycle drag on. You know, we wrote in, I guess, right after the Favely deal was announced, that Wabtec sees the downturn coming, right? So they saw the freight downturn coming. <coughs> I, you know, I, I think it was uh, a, a strong thesis uh, that that cycle would roll over. And the Favely deal is supposed to plug the gap. And what the, the, the purpose of the title of the slide is that when you model it out, and we show our models in more detail here than we usually do, uh, it's not even close. So uh, the upshot, just take takeaway is one, you know, it's just 17 is too high. I think everybody expected Favely to be, you know, this panacea, and it's not. Even in the initial guidance of 425, 430, whatever it comes out to be, you know, that's, that's not what people were hoping for in terms of driving um, incremental EPS. Um, you know, freight is still driving the outlook. Uh, transit is clearly not cyclically depressed. And we don't model it, but Chinese competitive entry will most likely, in all certainty, reshape the competitive dynamics of that market. Uh, the most important thing, excuse me, I think is also just to avoid uh, shorting, high short interest names on weakness. That's a good way to get in trouble. So. You know, the way I think of it is that Wabtec is a name that's expected to do badly. That's why it has a 16% short interest. When it does badly, that is not the unwind of a, uh, you know, valiant where people aren't expecting it, right? You press something that's really unwinding, coming up, done a fraud, and then around whatever it is. In a, in a cyclical, you kind of you kind of trade around uh, a short position, right? When, when they go down a lot, you don't press you cover. When you get squeezed, then you short. It's a different, uh, perhaps, methodology than some are useful for, used to. Uh, 